Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about shoulder motion when you reach your arms overhead. So quick look at this anatomy quiz. I want you to pause your video, read this quiz here, come up with an answer and then unpause it and we'll talk about it. When the arm reaches overhead, the shoulder blade must move towards the spine. I don't know, a lot of teachers tell you to retract your shoulder blades. Down and back, that's a popular cue. Up, forward, and out is the opposite of the most popular cue I tend to hear in yoga and fitness, and uh, just generally that they should stay fixed and braced. The correct answer is that the shoulder blades must move with the arms. They must move up, forward, and out. So today's video is talking about upward rotation of the scapula. Let's get to it. Hey, real quick, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel so you get notifications on when I release future videos. Please share this with your friends. It helps me, it helps them, it's free education. And stick around to the end of the video, I'll give you a little tip on how to incorporate this anatomy knowledge into your movement practice. Let's check it out. When the arm reaches overhead, the shoulder blade must move with it. If you reach forward and up, the shoulder blade has to go forward and up. If you reach back and down, then the shoulder blade goes back and down. If uh, you're in a class and people are telling you, oh, you gotta retract your shoulder blades, pull them to your spine. Oh, you gotta pin your shoulder blades down and back. They really need to stay, just fix them, brace them, brace your shoulder blades for stability. All of these things sound believable. They sound plausible, but they are wrong in terms of the biomechanics. Now, why this matters is not so much that you're going to like break something if you do these cues. If you try to pin your shoulder blades down and back while you're reaching overhead, it's not the end of the world, but it's just a stupid cue biomechanically, and it might make movement a little bit less efficient. So why are we giving cues at all? First of all, we need to consider that. Why are we cueing your anatomy anyway? Do students even understand it? And if so, does it really make them better movers? And if we are going to give a cue at all, then wouldn't it make more sense to give one that is biomechanically correct? I think so. Um, I also think that giving anatomical cues is not as important as I used to think, and that giving cues that are external, uh, instead of saying upwardly rotate the scapula, because nobody really knows what that means, and it takes you out of your head, uh, maybe we can give cues that indicate reach up like you mean it. That's good enough. Pretty much accomplishes the same thing. So uh, do the scapula move towards the spine? Uh, no, no, they don't. Uh, do they move down and back? Uh, no, no, they, not when you're reaching overhead. Uh, and should they stay fixed and braced? They, they do some bracing while they're moving. You can move and brace at the same time. It's uh, a bit weird. So let's move on. This is a slide from my upcoming um, shoulder anatomy course. If you're watching this video in the future, then uh, there will be a link below for you to sign up for my shoulder anatomy course. But uh, just heads up that it is coming. So what we're looking at here is simply that when you take the arm bone, which is right here, and you reach it up, you're reaching forward and up. It's a really simple concept. If your arm goes forward and up, then your shoulder blade right here needs to do the same thing. It needs to go with it. They're connected. <laughs> so if the arm goes forward and up, then the shoulder blade moves forward and up. Keep it simple, right? And it's an easy cue to follow. Here's an image from the back side of the shoulder. So we're looking at the back side of the right shoulder blade. And uh, here's the spine. And here are some rib, uh, ribs coming out. And I want you to pay attention to this distance here between the spine and the edge of the scapula. And uh, these numbers right here, the one, two, three, four, uh, they don't mean anything. They're just a, a gauge so that you can see that when we go to the, po the, fir the second pose where you actually reach overhead, that we've increased the distance. So your shoulder blade moves away from your spine while you're reaching overhead. And the other thing that it does is pay attention to this line right here. So the acromion right here when your arm is down by your side, is at this height. 
but then it moves up. It moves up, right? When you reach overhead. We'll take another look at this with a video. Before we get to the video, here's a quick review of scapular motions. So elevation and depression, elevation, the whole scapula just moves up. Depression, the whole scapula just moves down. Pretty simple. So if you shrug your shoulders, that's elevation. And if you press them down, that's depression. Um, let's skip uh, Let's skip this for a moment. Let's go to retraction and protraction. And you'll see basically um, these arrows are curved. So when you retract your shoulder blades, you're pulling your shoulder blades to your spine. And I just, I'm doing these curves to show that it wraps around the um, curved surface of the ribs. And then when you protract, you're basically pushing your shoulder blades forward. So if you were pushing a heavy door or doing a bench press, then you would be protracting your shoulder blades. I know uh, heavy weight lifters, uh, power lifters uh, are gonna disagree with me about that because they're gonna tell me that you gotta lock your shoulder blades back and down. But in general, for most activities, if you're pushing a thing, then your shoulder blades are gonna protract. Then upward rotation is, well, it's exactly what it looks like here. So we start from position A, where that's your scapula, and then we move to position B, where the scapula lifts up and um, out, basically. And while you're doing that, here's the interesting thing, is upward rotation is a combination of elevation, because you can see here, elevation, and protraction, right? Because you can see here, that we've protracted a little bit. So your scapula moves up and out and forward. Here we have a wonderful anatomy model. This app is Complete Anatomy uh, 20. I think we're on the 2020 version now, or 21 now. And uh, we're gonna turn this person around. And I want you to see, um, here's your shoulder blade uh, and your spine and all the muscles that are gonna move your shoulder blade as this person reaches overhead. So let's watch this motion and just look what the shoulder blade does. Did the shoulder blade move down and back when you were reaching overhead? No, not, not even close. The shoulder blade clearly moves out to the side, sort of into the space of your armpit and up, especially at the end right here, hold on, right here. So boop, boop, up, up, up. <laughs> So it couldn't be any more obvious that you're moving up, okay? And part of that is your serratus anterior muscle right here. So it's, you notice the fibers are lifting up onto the uh, first and second ribs there. So it's pulling your shoulder blade up there and forward. So just one more time here, let's just look at the motion. I'm gonna spin the model around as we look at it. So here's from the back. Okay. Here's from the side. So we're kind of moving forward, right? We're kind of moving into the space of the armpit. And then here's from the front. Oh, there we go. This will be better. Right? Okay, and notice the clavicle is lifting too, so you've got some space underneath your collarbone and all that too. So the main point here is to show you upward rotation, that the scapula, when you reach up, the shoulder moves with the arm, okay? So now how can we make this matter for cueing, um, for movement? Well, less is more. A lot of times we get obsessed with, you gotta push here and press here and lift here and suck in here and pull down here, but squeeze here and then relax here. Don't do that. <laughs> You're just gonna confuse people. You're gonna make them into conscious movers. And when we think too much about our movement, we move terribly. So if we can give people simple, simple cues, if we're gonna give cues at all, then let's, uh, let's keep them efficient and um, accurate. So the simplest thing I always start by just saying, hey, reach forward and up with your arms and let your shoulders naturally follow your arms. So when your arms move forward and up, your shoulder blades move forward and up. Don't make any special effort to, you know, squeeze here, press there, none of that stuff. Just let your shoulders follow your arms. My other favorite simple, simple, simple cue 
is, hey, we're playing follow the leader with our arms and our shoulder blades. So your arm is the leader and your shoulder blades are gonna play follow the leader. So we can do a little movement experiment and you can do this at home if you'd like. Reach forward and up and just notice that your shoulder blades can move forward and up. Reach out to the sides and notice that your um, arms move out to the sides. Reach down and back and notice that your shoulder blades naturally follow the leader down and back. Okay. If you were pretending like you're pushing a heavy door, push that door, push that door, and notice that as you push forward, your shoulder blades naturally move forward as well. Okay. So it's really simple. We don't have to get too super complex. I hope this helps. I hope this uh, breaks down the movement of the shoulder blade overhead and how to implement it into a movement class, make it relevant, but not overly complicated. Um, if you see people doing weird things, I would always suggest that you don't necessarily uh, force them to change, but simply ask students, hey, how does it feel in your shoulder, the way that you're doing that? Is that comfortable? Do you feel like you have a full and you know um, sort of effortless, strong range of motion? And if they tell you, oh, you know, this feels great, then eh, it's probably not a big deal to change their motion. But if they're like, oh, I don't know, it kind of feels like uh, it's a little stiff, I can't really get you know mo movement there, then you can say, well, hey, how would it feel if you, let's just start by you know reach forward and really push your shoulders forward, including your shoulder blades. And now with that, now try to reach overhead. And if they're like, oh, that feels better, well, great, then it mattered for them. But if they're like, oh no, that feels worse, <laughs> then, Forget the biomechanics. That person doesn't need to be doing that, right? So let's, we're learning the anatomy. We're learning uh, general rules that help most people. And we're also leaving room for nuance so that if the cue doesn't work for a person, if the theoretically correct movement doesn't work for a person, then we can abandon it and we can experiment and try other options. Thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends, and I will see you in the next episode.